And as you can see, I'm getting a pretty good sustain here. This is pretty long for me. This is a good one. The more you practice, the, the easier it gets. And meditation helps a lot too. If you meditate, you're going to make the wheel spin faster. Being young doesn't hurt either. I've got to breathe now. I've got to be careful and breathe at the side of my mouth so I'm not blown on the damn thing. Yeah, if you kind of like, you know, maybe go for a jog, stretch your arms out and stuff before you get started, get your blood flowing, that helps a lot, I notice. Um, you know, doing a little work up to get the blood flow up. You know, I think part of what may be going on here is the fact that you got iron in your blood, and it's a key component of magnetism. So as that iron's passing through, you know, you're producing a field here. And um, through static attraction of static charge, that little piece of paper is moving. Um, partially, I think what could be happening here too is also thermal dynamics, because uh, you'll notice on the Ripley's video that when they use the infrared camera, the Qigong master, uh, doing his art, his hands go up to 202 degrees. And um, there could be a little bit of thermal dynamic lift that you get from the infrared coming off the hands also. But when you move your hands around, you'll notice that you can affect the field of the thing a bit. I think the fact that it's shaped like a pyramid, I think that geometry has a little bit of something to maybe do with it too. I don't know if just round would spin this well, or, or at all even. I think it may need those sides to kind of grab the energy to propel it along. But I don't know for sure yet. I'm still figuring it out, still learning it. Still coming up with new ideas about how to use voltmeters and things to um, hook up to myself so I can get some better readings, maybe an EKG, because I definitely know something's going on in my veins because I can feel it in my hands when you're doing this. And, um, you know, it kind of tires you out a little bit too when you're doing this. <sighs> so all I got here is just a little piece of paper, a two inch square. You, 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 you fold it, you know, corner to corner, and then after that you don't crease it down the sides, but you kind of round them out a little bit, so that it kind of looks like a little Chinese temple roof kind of shape looking thing. But as you can see, you know, it's kind of pyramidal too. And um, this here, this is the thumbtack with a little bit of tape holding it up. And... Um, And you just get it up there on the pivot point and then uh, get your hands warmed up to it and stuff and get ready and uh, you got to concentrate. When I was first doing this, man, I felt like I was going to have an aneurysm and bust a bubble out the side of my head. And um, I don't have to strain myself so hard now and I find that straining doesn't really help anyway. Right, there we go. So you can go ahead and strain, but... Um, and that's what you're going to do as a beginner. You're going to strain, and there's no other way. So go ahead and just strain and bu burst your little bubble trying to make the damn thing move. Because um, eventually you, it'll, it will. And when it does, you're going to feel something in your hands. You're going to be sitting here going, okay, well, I'm doing everything they say to do in these videos, but still nothing's happening. Or, well, maybe I'm just, well, maybe I'm just actually blowing on it or something. I don't know. You know, and um, but then all of a sudden, wham, you're going to feel it in your hands. Uh, the energy is going to suddenly kick in, and you're going to feel, like I said, it's going to feel like a rubber ball full of air, 
that you're it's like you're pressing in on it and you can feel the pressure of the ball pressing outward and um, you'll feel it when it kicks in also you're gonna like I said you're gonna feel the sensations in the veins in your hands and you're definitely gonna be able to tell that there's something going on there And I have a couple books on this subject called the Earth Grid, and it shows how magnetic ley lines are on the planet. Well, we have magnetic ley lines on our body as well. And when you look at skin up close, you will notice that there is a hexagonal pattern of lines that go between the pores. And this is created from the natural flow of energy, and it runs along those little lines you see there. And, there, and those little lines feed on to bigger conduits that feed on to bigger conduits. And this is how your body electrics work, you know, the, how the neurons fire down the muscles and different things. And, um, you know, there's no religion in play here. you got to overcome the beliefs of polarity. Um, God exists above the creation of particle and energy. So no matter what you might believe about negative and positive and how current flows from negative and positive, Jesus does not live in the plus side and, the, and Lucifer does not live in the negative side. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. This force comes from your planet which was made by God and this force also exhibits itself throughout everything in the universe. This is also the same force that holds our atoms and our molecules together. And all I'm simply doing here is I'm not doing anything supernatural. I'm only being aware of what I have, which as you can see, uh, kind of weak. Not as strong as what a lot of other people have. But when you get it figured out, you can figure out how to change the direction also. When I first started doing this, I noticed that... Um, Instead of working like DC, I was like AC. It's like I could feel the current kind of pulsing back and forth. And it doesn't, this phenomenon for me isn't happening so much now since I've kind of been working at this. But at first, you would notice this little thing. It, it, would, it would sit here and it would be jumping around, kind of like dancing around, kind of like. But it, it wasn't really like getting any motion yet. But you could see it was kind of jumping around. It almost looked like this thing was metal and there was a magnet underneath it and it was being affected by the magnet. It had the exact same kind of look. But you know, it's just a little piece of paper, no metal, nothing. Um, but that's what it was like. Uh, you know, so the more you work with this phenomenon and the more you learn about it, well things don't have to be metal to be magnetic. That's just a much stronger form of magnetic, but everything that has an atomic structure has a magnetic structure. And this is just influencing that magnetic structure from the current flowing out of my magnetic, the, the matter known as me. <clears throat> so, as you can see, you can learn this stuff. It isn't rocket science. It isn't taboo, but it is part of the big lie. This is part of your natural God-given powers that you haven't been using because they dumbed you down. And part of the way they did is probably said, Oh, it's work of the devil, so therefore don't look at it, it's evil. Well, guess what, people? There is no such thing as truth that is evil because all truth comes from God. So anytime somebody is trying to hold truth from you, it is a lie, and you must look beyond it and see what is really there. And if you do, you will find that you can make the paper cheese spin. And you will find you can do a lot of other things, too. So don't accept the lie. Turn off your TV set. Get your intelligence from a better source. The only way to get over it is to shut off the brainwash. you got to stop the sensory bombardment from the corporations. Until that happens, you're never going to be able to think clearly. You're always going to be distracted from the truth. 
<sighs> okay, I'm wore out with this. Now I need a break. <sighs>